Hello there and welcome to my channel Novice Modelling in the Midlife Crisis. My name is Andy and today I'm doing you a completed build for my Academy 172 US Air Force B-29A marked up for Enola Gay and Boxcar which is kit number 12528. Now I'm at the stage where basically I've completed this apart from one thing which is painting the um the glazed section of the cockpit which i just haven't got around to doing yet um i have actually assembled this in a way that i don't normally do i normally paint this before attaching it but found trying to stuff it full of um foam which is my normal method to be too difficult so i put the um the cockpit cover on so i did eventually intend to mark this up for anola gay and have it completed by August the 6th, which was obviously when the atomic weapons were dropped on Hiroshima. Um, unfortunately, I missed that um, day by quite a bit. Um, so I decided to do something slightly alternate. And as you can see, I've actually marked it up on this side for Boxcar, which uh, dropped its weapon on Nagasaki on today, August the 9th. So what I've actually done decided to do is to mark this up for both aircraft so as you can see here we've got the nose art for boxcar we've got the number 77 which is the aircraft number and n on the tail and on the other side i've got this marked up as anola gay aircraft number 82 with the r on the tail so um yeah, it's kind of an alternative way of doing it, but I mean, at the end of the day, this is a very large aircraft, and I'm sure most people would kind of struggle getting um, both an Ola Gay and Boxcar um, to store them anywhere, to display them. So it's kind of an interesting potential way to sort of achieve the problem. Um, it's actually something that I did when I was a kid back about 30-odd years ago when I actually painted up a B-25, and it had came with two different... Um, those arts to do two, two different air, airplane names and not knowing anything about why these um, aircraft had uh, names on them I just put them one on one side and one on the other because I thought they were rather cool decal and thought that was a that was the way to go obviously so what we've got is we've got um, both little boy and fat man painted up in one of the recommended colors so there's a few different ways of recommended to go for this these have been done in olive green um, so we've got those separate. I didn't I decided not to load those into the Bombay. Um, painting wise, just run you through the colours that I've used. I used um, Army Painter Matte Black as the um, undercoat, and I've used Vallejo Acrylic Gloss Varnish. Uh, this has had a couple of coats of that. Um, I went through a whole bottle. Of Tamir XF16 flat XF16 flat aluminium. I've also used on a few areas chrome silver X11. XF82 was the olive drab which I used for the um, bombs. Uh, rubber black XF85 has been used on rubber areas. I created my own colour out of mixing flat aluminium and X10 gun metal, which I've used on my undercarriage and a few other areas just because I wanted a slightly different colour. Uh, flat black was used on the propellers and some of the, in some of the interior. Uh, XF3 flat yellow was used on the propeller tips. It actually came with decals, but I decided they were far too much hassle for me to be bothered with. Um, X10, like I said, I used, I mixed for my um, undercarriage and I also did the rear facing guns and cannons in that. Dark iron I used mostly on the interior. I used that as the main colour for the interior. There was actually a fully um, kitted out section at the back here which um, actually comes with two beds and I used wooden deck tan for the blanket and I used flat white XF2 for the pillow. You can actually see the interior of the aircraft on some of the uh, previous uh, build updates that I've done, which I think there were three build updates for this that I did, which is slightly more than I'd like to usually bore you guys with. 
Um, so if you've been following the build, you will know that I have actually had a bit of a struggle with this. It is actually far larger than any aircraft I've attempted to build so far. Uh, the biggest one I've built so far is a Messerschmitt uh, BF110 or a um, Lockheed Lightning. So this is obviously a big step up. Uh, paint wise, the paint went on quite well. Um, although I used a lot of it, obviously. Um, I'm quite happy with the general sort of finish of overall, although it is a little bit patchy and probably could have done with an extra coat. Um, unfortunately, I paint these things up in the garage and the lighting really isn't particularly good in there. I should have really sort of had it out and had a better look at it. When you look at the wings, there are actually a couple of marks where I've had a few problems where I've um, been resting it on the box and it's marked and damaged the actual paintwork because it hasn't quite set when I've turned it over. So that was a problem I had. Uh, there was quite a an amusing problem before I put the propeller on. I managed to mount this engine upside down, which required removing with my um, mini saw. Uh, one of the other problems that you're probably aware of, these um, areas here, which are where the um, remote control guns, and there's also two underneath as well. These actually have raised sections, and obviously on um, an Ola Gay and boxcar, the weapons were removed, and these had to be trimmed down using a recommended blade and some snips, and I didn't do a very good job of that. It's the first time I've actually encountered something where I've actually had to heavily um, alter a kit to sort of build it so unfortunately they, they didn't come out too well and the undersides you can see this one here and this one here slightly bodged jobs and um, i also had a couple of problems with the bombay doors which i've had to sort of jerry rig because they kept on collapsing and i've had a bit of a gluey mess i've also got a slight issue with this flap here which doesn't sit right not exactly sure why that is, but that's just there. Um, what went well apart from the painting? <laughs> Putting the decals on was quite interesting as well. I mean, I've got to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, it does actually uh, sit on its arse, unfortunately, as well, even though I have weighted it down with about um, 20 pence worth of pennies. So we might load it. We might put some more weights in the... Um, in the front undercarriage uh, bay as well, I think. Um, having decided to do the alternate markings on each side, I did actually find that putting these decals on the rear was, on the rear uh, tail were quite difficult, you could say, um, because as you can see, the, uh, the rudder here is actually sort of set into the tail. And these decals were provided as one single piece. And I've had to cut them. And again, this is the first time I've had to do any sort of alterations to decals. Um, so basically I've had to sort of cut them in half. And if I hadn't, if I had decided to um, do this um, singular, I would have actually had problems there because I did actually manage to completely ruin one set of decals. And I have actually had to to pinch pieces off where it just hasn't quite worked so yeah so that was a little bit of a problem for me as well so yeah there we go uh, oh incidentally it's the first time i've actually used mascol umbral mascol on an aircraft um i used it on this viewport here there's supposed to be a small window here which there is on the other side but and i also used it on the rear gunner's position um, when I took it off, it's probably more. It's probably down to my ineffective application. Um, I did actually peel quite a lot of bits of paint off as well, particularly on this part here. And when I went to try and put the window in, sort of draw a circle in paint, I just made a right mess of that, and I um, just decided just to paint it just in silver because I was just, just <laughs> I was just at my, at my wits' end basically. So there's the other side such a big thing this so as we can see we've got the red half a red stripe on here which is correct for boxcar and i think that's about all i have to report really um, i used both extra thin and tamiya cement 
I also use this um, CA Black, which is cyan, cyan acrylic adhesive. Um, I use this because this is a very strong glue. And I loaded the engine nacelles with pennies to try and keep the weight at the front. And obviously this is stronger, so I actually decided to um, use that glue, hoping to keep the engines attached. And I used a, quite a lot of my Vallejo plastic putty as well, which always comes in handy being a novice. So there we go. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for watching. Um, we will be building something else shortly. Um, I don't think I'm going to be attempting anything quite as big as this because it has been a bit of a a bit of a bind, and it's taken me quite a lot longer than I hoped it would take or anticipated it would take. Um, but there we go. One finished B29 in around about six days. Not perfect, but for a novice like myself, not too bad, I don't think. Be seeing you.